Hi. In this video, I'm going to be going over weather routing again, uh, this time on the iPad. Uh, I'm going to look at a route between uh, San Francisco and uh, Hawaii uh, in uh, kind of like getting started way uh, from the beginning of uh, just getting started with, with, with weather routing uh, to building a route. Uh, I made a video on this topic earlier for the Macintosh. And as weather routing is pretty much the same, there's a different user interface uh, on the iPad and iPhone compared to the Mac, but uh, all the same functionality is available on each of these platforms. So rather than going through the, all the material I covered for the Mac, I'll add a card, look up, <laughs> look up and uh, you'll see where the card is. And I encourage you to watch the Mac video. Uh, while the interface is different on the iPad, uh, all the concepts uh, will still apply. And uh, this in this video, I won't go through all the concepts I covered in the Mac video. So let's just get started. Uh, after you've started the uh, free trial or you've purchased the uh, weather routing add-on to Luck Rib, you'll see a new button on the left-hand side, third down, uh, the isochrones button. Uh, when you tap that on the iPad, you'll see the weather routing pane on the left open up uh, on the iPhone, uh, that pane will be closed. And you can close that pane by tapping the little X icon on the top left. And uh, now the weather routing icon is orange, which indicates we're still in the weather routing mode. And you can see that as well by looking down at the bottom of the screen, there's a row of buttons that the weather routing tool is still active. And you can open and close that pane by tapping that fourth icon. Uh, open, closed, open, closed. You get the idea. So the system at the moment is alerting us to the fact that uh, this vessel, this default vessel, is missing its sailing performance. And there's a red arrow to the right of the default vessel settings. So tapping that arrow, we open the vessel settings editor. And if you look at the top line, sailing performance, indeed, there uh, is no performance specified. So uh, in the other video, in the Mac video, I go through this a little bit more. Uh, for this video, I'll simply select the default cruiser uh, vessel performance. Uh, this vessel is a, it's pretty fast. It's, it's, cru it's a cruising boat, which travels up to around eight, just over eight knots. Uh, so it's pretty fast for a cruising boat. So having done that, uh, now the warning or the message, the hint, is that this vessel is missing its motoring performance. So I'll fix that by having the vessel always sail. So tapping the always sail button, now we see uh, a hint that there is no start point identified. So I'll move uh, the cursor over to San Francisco and tap the plus icon, the button on the left, and use the menu item create start point. And now we see a start point added. Uh, the next message we see is missing start time. So we'll move the grip time to where we want to start this journey. And I'll start this at the, be at the beginning of the forecast period. So we tap the clock icon uh, and there's a menu item here, set start time from timeline. So I'll do that. And now the solve button in the weather routing pane is active. So let's tap it and give it a try. So there's no target point defined yet. Uh, and it's, the system has gone off and created the entire solution space for this weather file. So we started this journey at the start of this forecast period. And with the performance of that default vessel, uh, it's generated all the possible paths which uh, exist uh, for the whole 16 days duration of this forecast period. Uh, and in the Mac video, I go through and I uh, show how to analyze this, uh, these isochrones in, in some detail. And we make, I make some choices about, or some preferences for how I want to travel through. Uh, in this video, I'll show in the, in, the, in the Mac video, there's lots of cursor being moved around to analyze uh, the different paths which are possible. Uh, as, as you scroll the map around, the point underneath the central crosshair 
is the one that the system will show the optimized path for. Uh, but on the iPad, it's, off, it's often useful just to leave the map where it is and use that tip of uh, tapping down on the map and then having a small pause. And after the pause, the cursor jumps to your finger and you can move your finger around to uh, explore the isochrones as well. So that's a really useful way of looking for these zippers, uh, which I have talked about more in the Mac video. Please watch that. Uh, the other thing I did in the Mac video was I decided to uh, prefer southern routes, and to do that, I created a, a constraint point, and constraint points are unique to Luckrib. I'll just change that display a little bit. Uh, so I'll add a constraint point uh, down here in the trade winds. So I want this route to head south into the trade winds in, rather than heading straight east and then heading south towards Hawaii. So down here somewhere. So the way to do that will be to uh, open up the tool area uh, and then select this uh, the, the icon to the right of the tool icon, uh, which is the uh, root and boundary tool. And I put the cursor where I want uh, this point to be. I'll hit the plus button and ask it to create a constraint sequence. And it's just made me a point labeled P1. And if I place the cursor over that point, uh, the information button is active. Uh, tapping that one, I have choices about how to, con how to configure this point. And as I leave San Francisco, I want to pass this point, but leave it on my starboard on the right-hand side. So open up that menu again, and I'll select the item Leave Point on Starboard. And now that point is uh, turned red, and it's labeled S2, Starboard 2. Uh, okay, so that's good. I'll leave the points, the, the root and boundary tool. And I'll go back to the weather routing tool, open up the vessel preferences, the vessel settings, and uh, where the constraint sequence uh, is available. Hmm, which one is this? Constraint 1 or 2? Close this again. <laughs> I'll go back to the uh, previous tool and I'll ask it to uh, rename this constraint sequence. Oh, it is 2. But I'll call it uh, NP, North Pacific. Close that. Back to weather routing. Open up vessel settings. Head down and I'll choose this NP constraint. Uh, now, that's done. So it, it'd be leaving San Francisco, uh, passing that point on the starboard and heading towards Hawaii. Last thing I want to do, uh, or I'll, something I'll do at this point, is I'll just I'll make a target point. So for this example, I'll uh, head over to Hilo. So create target point, uh, resolve, and there we go. There's a, a weathering solution leaving San Francisco, passing the starboard uh, at this point. We created the constraint point and uh, leaving it on our starboard side. And as we head down south of San Francisco, we're sailing along nicely. Uh, jibe, head more south, past the point. Uh, all of the isochrone, the isochrones at this point are full. It's just doing a complete, a full search still, trying to find the path to Hawaii. And then as we pass that constraint point, the system realizes that all the, of the isochrone points north of that point no longer apply as they didn't satisfy the constraint. Uh, whereas all of the points to the south, uh, they all could be the optimized points to Hawaii. It doesn't know yet. Uh, so continuing on, the vessel heads towards Hawaii. Uh, we can look at the details, opening up the information button, uh, select the show details, solution details. And we see that the duration of this trip is 14 days, 13 hours, uh, traveling 2,269 miles. Uh, and there's information about how much time is spent upwind and downwind and all kinds of details. Let's close that again. Uh, you can choose many different ways of seeing this information. There's an upwind-downwind image. 
uh, in this image, green, uh, pretty much means reaching. Uh, if I close this weather reading pane, the color legend is larger. And we see that the, the red areas are uh, almost peer up when the angles are, uh, the wind angles are on the, on the bow or just off the bow. Uh, the beam colors are greenish, the string colors are bluish. So you can, you can look at this image pretty quickly and, and see uh, what the sailing angles are as we travel. So this is a nice downwind area. As we uh, make that turn around our constraint point, uh, we're reaching. Oh, and then we end up heading into Hawaii at a pretty, pretty upwind angle. So that's going to get wet. Uh, at the moment, the weather routing information is closed. You can open up these different areas in the weather routing information by tapping the arrow on the left-hand side. So I can now see the information at the cursor. So in this upwind area, the apparent wind is 14 knots. The true wind is 10. Uh, yeah, this is a pretty fast boat. Uh, so yeah, upwind at 14 knots. That'll be actually a nice sail. A nice sail into Hawaii. Okay, one of the last things I showed in the Mac video was uh, where the sailing uh, performance uh, catalog is. So if I, if I open up the weather reading pane again by tapping that uh, bottom icon, I'll open up the vessel performance and then tapping this uh, sailing performance menu, there's an item labeled polar, catalog, polar diagram catalog. And if I open up that, uh, there is the list of all of the uh, polar diagrams which are built into the system. And I'll go through this in more detail uh, in a future video. And I go through it in slightly more detail in the Mac, the Mac video, which I hope by now you've seen. And I think with that, uh, I'm gonna leave it, keep this kind of short. So yeah, uh, <laughs> thanks for watching. Uh, if you uh, have an idea for a video you want to see in the future, like, leave me a comment. And uh, yeah, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.